Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. We begin tonight with breaking news. Four men now stand charged with murder for their part in an assault outside of a Fargo bar. Thank you for joining us. I'm Krista Bame. Jason Owen, Scott Moen, Jesse Olson, and Nicholas Morris are all charged with murder and conspiracy to commit aggravated assault. The charges come after 35-year-old Joey Garsland passed away early this morning. Court documents say witnesses saw these men punch and kick Garsland while he was obviously unconscious. Well, in general, it seemed to be a beating. I don't know how better to describe it than that. Uh, he was beat severely, suffered injuries as a result of it, uh, and died as a result of those injuries. The four are being held in the Cass County Jail, and bail was set for each at $1 million cash. A Crookston woman is in a Minneapolis hospital suffering from severe burns following a fire at her home yesterday afternoon. Police have not released the name of the 60-year-old woman who lived at this rental home with her son and his family. She was alone at the time of the fire. Officials say the home received very little damage. A neighbor found the woman standing on the street with a burning bag on the lawn. Her hair was in a bun, so her hair was still burning. So I took my hat and I put the hair out, put her hair out. And when I did that, her scalp and her skin let go and I could see her skull. There was a bag burning between the house and the yard, in the garage. There was a plastic bag burning and uh, there was another big burn spot in the grass. So I don't know if she was doing something in the house that combusted, that ignited, but she was burned really bad. The incident remains under investigation and police are not releasing any further details at this time. Well, what a great start to the extended holiday weekend. Let's toss it over to Hutch to find out what's in store for tonight. Hutch? I've checked once, I've checked twice, and now three times. I still can't find any clouds on the sky cam right now. Conditions are absolutely perfect to get outside and enjoy. Temperatures in the mid, even upper 70s. Look at Langdon soaring to 77 there. Thief River Falls 75, and it is 73 right now in Lakes Country in Fergus Falls. A few sprinkles starting to show up with some afternoon convection firing in southern portions of Manitoba. Uh, some of this may skirt our international border counties. Other than that, it's going to be high and dry this evening. We'll spend most of the daylight hours in the 70s. And then, Krista, as we head past sunset, we'll dip down into the 60s. Now, it does look like there's that chance of rain for the holiday weekend. I'll have the very latest on what our models are telling us about when and where and how much here in just a few moments. All right. Thank you so much, Hutch. And we all knew it was coming. With the warmer temperatures comes the swarms of mosquitoes. Cass County Vector Control now services Moorhead. And today, crews were up in the old Oakport area working overtime to kill the larva before they go airborne. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric is up north to see what all the buzz is about. Bradford? I'm here just at a small community park in the Brentwood Acres neighborhood. And this was ground zero for crews as they worked to kill as many of the pesky, disease-carrying blood suckers as possible. And you can tell by the size, like kind of how far along they are in their, in their life cycle. And these are pretty early. Carter Woodley's job today, skeeter surveillance. I'm just going to sample water looking for mosquitoes. And find them we did. This little vial is about two field water scoops worth. Woodley says this time of year, they try to be proactive and kill as many as they can while still in the water. Once they get airborne, the swarms are harder to combat. So what's the problem with these buggers? There are many diseases that mosquitoes can carry. Uh, fortunately, we don't have to worry about too many of them in this area. I mainly due to our short season and the type of climate that we have. West Nile virus is obviously the big one. Vector controls plan of attack, sample, then spray. They use equipment attached to the back of an ATV. There were summers where you couldn't even go outside and it was just unbearable. Steve Retzer lives near the park now, but he used to live in South Fargo. He says the bugs are somewhat concerning, but crews usually do a good job of controlling them. Most people we talked with feel the same way. They too are worried about the disease the bugs carry, but they say they are confident with vector control in charge of the battle. This field right here is where vector control was taking samples today. You look at it, 
but you can't really tell that there's water here. Take a few steps, however, and you start splashing around. Uh, vector control tells us this weekend is actually a very good time to get out and check your backyards for any standing water. Reporting live in North Moorhead, Bradford Eric, Valley News Live. Factor Control says the chemicals they use pose no threat to dogs or kids. It's just mostly bacteria that eat the larvae. The West Fargo Fire Department is looking to replace their search and rescue boat with a new, safer one. Chief Dan Fuller says what they have now is a late 70s model aluminum flat bottom boat that tips over very easily. And he says repairs to the outboard engine are becoming too costly. Chief Fuller explains the water rescue equipment is a vital part of their operation, and he'd rather have it and not need it than waste time waiting for it to come from somewhere else. And then plus, and it's not just the river now, we have a lot of ponds, uh, man-made ponds in town, especially in the southern part of town, that if we were to have a, a drowning in, in one of those ponds, we'd, we'd rather have this piece of equipment ready to go. Granite City in Fargo is holding a Dine to Donate event next Wednesday where a portion of the proceeds will go to fund the new boat. And Grand Forks police are arre or have arrested a man accused of stealing packages from outside people's homes. Leslie Joe Keplin is being held in jail on four charges of theft of property and one charge of possession of stolen property. Police say the alleged thefts happened in the area but that there may be other cases that haven't been reported. People who suspect they may have had packages stolen are asked to call Grand Forks Police. The new West Fargo location for CashWise opened its doors today, right at the intersection of Veterans Boulevard and 32nd Avenue South. It was pretty packed, too. There were plenty of samples to try out as you headed into the store. The store includes a caribou coffee, a liquor store, a gas station, and car wash. Work is still ongoing around the site, so use extra caution in the parking lot. And a new location for Juice It Smoothie and Juice Bar opened just yesterday along 32nd Avenue South. The juice bar is locally owned and open until 9 p.m. most evenings. The original store is located near Target in Fargo. The business is already thinking about third and fourth locations, possibly in North and West Fargo. Currently, they have buy one, get one specials going on at their new 32nd Avenue location. And you may not believe the types of cars kids have these days. Today, they got the chance to show them off to the community. You could see most anything from this vintage pickup to motorcycles, even some choppers. The show included more than 50 vehicles in Fargo South's parking lot. And they belong not only to students and staff, but also some of the people who helped put this show together. But if cars and bikes aren't your cup of tea, colorful pottery and something to even hang on your wall might be more to your liking. Even though the show went on all day, it was definitely not a day off for the students. They can't get out of school all day, but I think some of them kind of are sneaky and they do. But, uh, you know, just, just in between classes, they'll come out and, and just hang and talk to friends. And it's just a big, uh, a big nice community event. Today's cars, pottery, and paintings are a chance for students to show off projects they have been working on all school year. The Riverkeeper's efforts to reforest the red are getting a major shot in the arm today. This time, the focus has shifted to Moorhead. About 100 students from Moorhead's Horizon Middle School put on the gloves, planting trees and shrubs along River Shore Drive. The wet weather has slowed the tree planting progress, but the young people turned out in force today to keep the project moving. We want them to learn that they're helping the community and helping to protect the Red River and be proud of something that they're doing that they can come back in 10 years and see a whole bunch of trees that they planted. Laney says the goal is to get 3,500 trees planted along the Red and she says they can use some more help too. Two more big plantings are scheduled for early next month. One is June 4th and the other on the 5th. You can go to Riverkeeper's website or give them a call for more information. One family resort in Ottertail County is celebrating 100 years of business. The East Silent Lake Resort in Dent, Minnesota was started back in 1915 and still today providing a place for families to enjoy time together. Valley Today's Christy Larson tells us more about the resort celebrating a milestone. Folks that may not have lake access otherwise can come and 
spend some time here on uh, one of the beautiful Minnesota lakes. In 1915, East Silent Lake Resort was started by a German minister named Charles Bublitz. Now it's 100 years later, and despite the decreasing number of resorts, the Leonard family is continuing to update their cabins and creating a fun place for all. Outside of our normal activities, whether it be pontoon rides and ice cream socials, we're having, uh, doing some things like uh, weekly medallion hunts, which we're going to do this year to celebrate 100 years. Uh, we're having a historical event where someone from Ottertail County Historical Society is coming out, going to be giving a presentation on uh, tourism in Ottertail County. All ages of tourists will love the activities they do at the resort every day. We have all kinds of activities for all kinds of uh, uh, people, whether you want to just kind of relax on the beach, uh, throw a pole and do some fishing. Uh, if you're more adventurous, we've got uh, water activities like tubing and of course uh, our kind of famous human launch activity, which a lot of the kids and adults uh, love, to, love to do. But the most important thing to the Leonard family is to provide a place that guests can create memories from. You can hear the birds in the background to literally step back, put the phone down, turn off the computer, and just uh, kind of un unwind in, in nature for whether it's a couple days or a couple weeks or some of our guests a couple months. In Ottertail County, Christy Larson, Valley News Live. For more information about the resort and to see if they have availability for your family to start making memories this summer, just go to valleynewslive.com and look for this story under the Valley Today tab.